Hello and welcome to Raju Notes channel, your pit stop for weekly current affairs updates. The updates tailor made for students taking all kinds of competitive exams like UPSC, civils, defense and placement interviews. Please subscribe to the channel and stay updated every Sunday. The ISRO on 26 successfully launched India's largest rocket, the LVM-3, from the Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sri Harikota. The rocket is carrying 36 OneWeb Generation 1 satellites weighing about 5,805 kgs, which will be placed in the low Earth orbit. The 43.5 meter tall rocket has five consecutive successful missions before today's launch, including the Chandrayaan 2 mission. India's first cloned cow calf of the indigenous Gir breed has been produced at the National Dairy Research Institute in Haryana's Karnal. The institute said the calf has been named as Ganga and that it weighs 32 kgs and is growing well. The Gir cow breed is capable of producing 15 litres of milk every day. The passing out parade of the first batch of the Agnivirs recruited under the Agnipat scheme was successfully conducted on Tuesday this week at INS Chilka. Indian Navy Chief Admiral R. Harikumar reviewed the maiden POP of 2,585 Agnivirs. The Indian Navy Chief called the day historic as the country has got its first ever batch of women sailors passing out. The world's first 7.2-meter high-rise train was set on trial in Delhi, Jaipur. Railway Minister Ashwini Vaishnav shared a video of the same. The Vande Bharat Express train has been modified for the Delhi-Jaipur route. High-rise pantographs have been fit on the roof of certain coaches. The train is likely to begin operation on the route from April. The Defence Ministry signed a nearly 3,000 crore contract with New Space India Limited NSIL, on Wednesday this week for an advanced communication satellite GSAT-7B for the Indian Army. The geostationary satellite is a first of its kind in the 5-ton category, said the Ministry. It will be developed indigenously by Indian Space Research Organisation ISRO. Lok Sabha this week passed the Competition Amendment Bill without a debate. The bill will expand the scope of penalties to entities collaborating in cartelization. It also seeks to regulate mergers and acquisitions based on the value of transactions. The bill was passed amid disruptions by opposition members over Adani issue and disqualification of Rahul Gandhi. The government has launched a new centrally sponsored scheme, namely New India Literacy Program, with financial outlay of over 1,000 crore rupees for implementation during the financial year 2022-23 to 2026-27. The scheme aims to cover a target of 5 crore non-literates in the age group of 15 years and above. Minister of State of Education Annapurna Devi said this is in a written reply to the questions in Rajya Sabha on Wednesday this week. She said the beneficiaries under the scheme are identified through a door-to-door -door survey on mobile app by the surveyors in a state and the union territories. The minister said the non-literates can also avail the benefit of this scheme through direct registration from any place through the mobile app. India and Sri Lanka have agreed to jointly build a 135-megawatt solar power plant in two stages in the island nation's eastern port district of Trincomalee to promote renewable energy. Sri Lankan cabinet has given approval for the project as the country aims to generate 70% of its electricity requirements by 2030 from renewable energy sources. The Ministry of Defence has signed Rupees 1,700 crores contract with Brahmos Aerospace BAPL for the procurement of next generation maritime mobile coastal batteries, long range, and Brahmos missiles. These systems will significantly enhance multi directional maritime strike capability of the Indian Navy, the ministry said. The delivery of the batteries is scheduled to commence from 2027. 
Prime Minister Narendra Modi lauded the Petroleum and Natural Gas Regulatory Board for introducing the implementation of the unified tariff. Prime Minister mentioned it as a noteworthy reform in the energy and natural sector. In a series of tweets, Petroleum and Natural Gas Minister Hardeep Singh Puri informed that the tariff mechanism will help the country to achieve one nation, one grid, one tariff model and also propel the gas market in distant areas. The minister said that it is introduced with an objective of country's economic development across the regions. The United Kingdom has joined the Indo-Pacific Trade Bloc three years after it officially left the European Union. The Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership CPTPP, is a free trade agreement between 11 countries. After 21 months of negotiations, this is UK's biggest trade deal since Pretex and it becomes the first European country to join the CPTPP, the government said. The International Monetary Fund IMF has approved 15.6 billion US dollar support package to Ukraine as assistance with the conflict hit country's economic recovery. The loan is part of a broader 115 billion US dollar international support package to help the countries meeting urgent funding needs. Of the total amount approved by the IMF, 2.7 billion dollars is being made available to Ukraine immediately and the rest of the funds are due to be released over the next four years. Extended Fund Facility is the first major financial program approved by the IMF for the country involved in a large-scale war. India-Malaysia trade can now be settled in Indian rupee, Ministry of External Affairs announced. The announcement came after the Indian International Bank of Malaysia IIBM, operationalized RBI's mechanism for foreign rupee trade by opening a special rupee Vostro account through Union Bank of India. The mechanism is aligned with the Malaysia's foreign exchange policies, IIBM said in its statement. India on Saturday this week reported 2,994 fresh COVID-19 cases, taking the active caseload of the country to 16,354. Kerala has the highest number of active COVID-19 cases in the country at 4,375, followed by Maharashtra, 3,090, followed by Gujarat, 2,310, followed by Karnataka, 1,108, and Delhi, later by 945 cases. Notably, 1.43 lakh COVID-19 tests were conducted in last for 24 hours. The United States NATO Ambassador Juliana Smith said, the NATO North Atlantic Treaty Organization's door is open in terms of engagement with India if it is interested. But we wouldn't want to, at this stage, to invite India to a NATO ministerial until we know more about their interest in engaging with the alliance more broadly. She added, NATO presently has about 30 countries as their members. And now for the segment where we see the events that unfolded this week back in history. 26th March 1979 Signing of Israel-Egypt Peace Treaty The historic peace treaty between Israel and Egypt aggrieved by Mechem Begin and Anwar Sadat and based on the Camp David Accord mediated by US President Jimmy Carter in September 1978 was signed on this day in 1979. 27th March 47 BCE Cleopatra reinstated as Queen of Egypt. The legendary Cleopatra VII Philopatra aided by her Roman lover Julius Caesar was reinstated as the co-ruler of Egypt. This day in 47 BCE following a civil war with her brother Ptolemy XIII. 28 March 1930, Constantinople renamed as Istanbul, built as a Byzantium about 657 BCE, then renamed Constantinople 
in the 4th century CE after Constantine the Great made the city his capital the Turkish city of Istanbul officially received its present name on this day in 1930 29th March 1867 Dominion of Canada created on this day 1867 the British North American Act the British colonies of Nova Scotia New Brunswick and Canada were united as the dominions of Canada and the province of Canada was separated into Quebec and or Ontario 30 March 1981 failed assassination attempt against US president Ronald Reagan in Washington DC on this day in 1981 barely 2 months after his inauguration as the 40th president of United States Ronald Reagan was shot and seriously wounded by would be assassin John H Winkley Jr 31 March 1889 Eiffel Tower inaugurated the 980 foot 300 meter Eiffel Tower a wrought iron technological masterpiece created by Gustave Eiffel to commemorate the centenary of the French Revolution was officially inaugurated in Paris this day in 1889 1st April 1999 creation of Nunavut created this day in 1999 by carving a vast region from Canada's northwestern territories the Canadian territory of Nunavut stretches across much of the Canadian Arctic and encompasses the traditional land of the Inuit Well that's all friends for this week's updates see you soon next sunday on the same channel till then take care bye bye